voice, and it turns out the community is very happy to pay for their newspapers. We got some cash, which we needed. Yeah. Tommy Limiting Streetcar use will impact historic tourism and future opportunities for the community. And future opportunities. Limit will limit streetcar use. Tacoma Passman's Tommy Limiting Streetcar use will impact historic tourism and affect and impact historic. Presence, tell me limiting the streetcar use will impact historic tourism and future opportunities for the city. Future opportunities for the city. That's right, some participants tell me that limiting streetcar use will impact historic tourism and opportunities for the community. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six. Tell me limiting the streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the community. As well as future opportunities for the community. Got you, friend. Yeah? You got it? Thank you, friend. It's because I was calling you because all channels were busy for the live view. I was just trying to see if that one was the correct one. Better you. Okay. Thanks, friend. That's right, tell me that living in the street. Yeah, yeah. Use and the delay wasn't 2.5. I changed it to 1.2. Is it okay? Well, yeah, living in the street car use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the people. Tommy Living Streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the community.
sorry to my person was telling me living in the street car. I'm sorry to my person was telling me living in the street car use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the borderland. Small passengers tell me that living in the streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the borderland. As future opportunities for the city. So small passengers tell me that living in the streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the community. It's telling me that living in the streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the community. That's right, some of us can tell me that living in the streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as affect um, bar, uh, opportunities, as well as affect future opportunities for historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the city. Historic tourism. Historic tourism. Will impact historic tourism and affect opportunities in the borderland. Future opportunities in the borderland. I hate when they do that. Like it makes me so much. 
threats of malpass and storm and living, the street car use could impact historic tourism as well as affect future opportunities for the community. Start to mall pass winds tell me that limiting the streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the community. Small residents tell me living the street car use could impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities. Are you low? Are you going lower or what? No. Don't go too low. You know what? How low? Okay. This time. How close are you? No, 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 no. Up uh, from the belt? Muy bien. Yeah? Yeah. Put a little bit here in the big center. Small Palestinians tell me living streetcar use will impact historic tourism and the future opportunities for the community. this. Some of us in some living streetcar use will impact historic tourism. Historic tourism. Impact historic tourism. tourism. Historic tourism. Future. Historic impact. Historic tourism. Historic tourism. That's right, Stephanie. Some all passwinds tell me that limiting streetcar use will impact historic tourism as well as future opportunities for the community. the streetcar use.
Department of Los Angeles, we hear why Mayor Oscar Lish says this will better utilize the use of the streetcar. Why he believes this will better utilize the streetcar use. The streetcar use. Coming up on AB7 at 6, we speak to Mayor Oscar Lisa on why he believes this change will help better utilize the streetcar use. Will help will better utilize the streetcar use. How he believes this change will better utilize the streetcar use. And coming up on ABC 7 at 6, we speak to Mayor Oscar Leeser on why he believes this change will help better utilize the streetcar use. We're now reporting in downtown El Paso, Brianna Perez, ABC 7.
getting it getting it right for us. I can I can throw through this and stay on script, or can I can just tell you what I know about Ben Harrell. When I won this state senate seat, it was the first time a Republican has ever held this seat. I worked my butt off to get a majority of Democrat voters to recognize that it's time to start voting your values and not just partisan, only partisan level. I represent the Mexico-U.S. border. And the counties of Hidalgo and Luna, which are here today, will attest that keeping your family safe and putting America first and putting God and, and, and protecting your Second Amendment, wanting good schools and access to good health care is not a partisan issue. And continuing to vote the same way again and again has not worked for them. And so that year, for the first time, they switched over and elected a Republican senator to represent them. I thank them for that vote. In that same year, they elected Congresswoman Yvette Harrell to represent them as well. And I have never seen someone on the campaign trail or once in office work harder than Yvette did. And not just in D.C. And we all know that she voted exactly what we sent her to D.C. and how to represent our values up there. But all of us can say that she was visible in our communities when she was back here. I want to thank you, that, Carol, and I can tell you that the people on the border who are facing, living in a nightmare of a crisis, want to thank her for the service of what she's done here in New Mexico. It is time now to welcome our last and our next Congresswoman, Yvette Carroll, to the stage. Against Parents' Bill of Rights. 
Let me tell you, with friends like that, he feeds enemies. But here's what's going on. We have got to work on every single level, county, state, federal, local. It's time we put conservative voices back in the driver's seat. We've got to show up in November next year.
Now, I don't really think a high bar for Congress, but I think if you have a relationship with a Chinese spy, you shouldn't be able to be on the Intel Committee. You see, Swalwell can't get a security clearance in the private sector, so I'm not going to give him one with our secrets in the government. They have 190 other Democrats, one of them could do the job. Adam Schiff? You can't be in that position and lie to the American public. You know what he did while he was chairman? He missed what was happening in Afghanistan. He missed that China was building hypersonics and we were not. If we want to protect this nation, we need people there that are serious on both sides of the aisle. So after I removed them, I actually had a meeting with all the new members, Republicans and Democrats, and I told them, if you lie and leak, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, you're off. If you have a relationship, if you have a relationship with a spy, you're gone. Not a high ball. Same thing when it comes to foreign affairs. I didn't tell them they couldn't have a committee, but they're not going to have the classified view. Omar said, as a member of Congress, oh, something happened on 9-11. No, something didn't happen on 9-11. Americans got killed for believing in freedom, and we're going to stand up, and we're never going to forget what happened on 9-11.
People are coming from 160 other countries. One of our greatest things is our rule of law. The other thing that's happening is fentanyl is coming across that border. It starts in China, it comes across that border. We don't have operational control, the cartels do. If we have to list the cartels as terrorists, we will, if we need to, to stop them. But I want you to think as Americans, there'll be close to 300 Americans who are poisoned today and die. I don't think there are kids from the other side of the tracks that you don't know about. There are children. They reach every single family, whether you're Democrat, Republican, whether you're wealthy, whether you're poor, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. And most of them aren't buying fentanyl, they're always buying Xanax or others. But I want you to know, why are these people targeting Americans? It's the number one killer of Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. And I want you to think about what happens in your life between the ages of 18 and 45. That's the generation you reproduce. That's the generation in your age period where you're the most productive at work. That's the age group that volunteers for our military and defends our freedom. It's a direct attack on this country. And I will tell you, so last week, I was at the Reagan Library, and I was meeting with the president of Taiwan. China paid for protesters there, too. <laughs> but you know what? I will stand with anybody who wants to stand for freedom and democracy. <laughs> and you know what? I stood in a press conference with a piece of the Berlin Wall behind me. Because that was the last time we had a president who understood peace through strength. He also understood that he had an evil empire. He didn't need a book to know how to win. He'd say, just four words. How do you defeat the Soviet Union? We win, they lose. <laughs> the Berlin Wall came down. You know, I want to tell you an interesting story. You know, Ronald Reagan, there's this moment in time, if he was here today, would tell us all, peace without freedom is meaningless. Think about that. It's human na nature that we crave peace, but you can never attain it without having freedom. And Reagan had this dilemma. We've watched it time and time again in history, and I'm afraid history is repeating itself. We watched Devil Chamberlain appease Hitler by giving him a country and telling the world peace for our time. We watched Barack Obama appease Iran, give them millions of dollars, and let them fund terrorists around the world. Ronald Reagan had the same dilemma. He was in his second term, and he was negotiating with Gorbachev. He was in Iceland. And he went into the meeting, and they thought they were going to have a smart Reagan. He said, you can't have staff. You can only have interpreters. He said, fine. And he sat there and he negotiated with Gorbachev. And he was getting almost everything he asked for, a reduction in nuclear weapons. And then Gorbachev asked Reagan for something. He said, I want you to end the SDI program. But I want you to know at the time, this wasn't a proven program. They called it Star Wars. They made fun of Reagan. You know what Reagan said? Reagan said, no, I'm not going to end it. I'll share it with you so the world will be safe. What he was talking about, yes, the SDI is what keeps us safe today. It's like the Iron Dome that shoots down the missiles. Our current president can't shoot down a balloon. But Gorbachev <laughs> looked at him and said no. And Reagan looked at everything he was getting. And he realized pretty good, but it did nothing for the shipyard workers in Poland. It did nothing for those in the gulags. So he got up and he walked away. The New York Times, every piece of the media that criticizes him today criticized him.
But had Reagan not walked away that day, the Berlin Wall would have never collapsed. So we must remember we have to stand firm. You know, in my lifetime, two presidents have won the Nobel Peace Prize. Barack Obama and Jimmy Carter. They got the number right, the president's wrong. It should have been Ronald Reagan and Donald Trump. <laughs> Ronald Reagan for defeating the Soviet Union, and Donald Trump for the Abraham Accords in the Middle East. You know, an interesting thing. In the last four presidents, George Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden, Putin has invaded another country and every single president except under Donald Trump. And then, but now we're watching like in the 1930s where Germany, Italy, and Japan came together and created an excess of power. We're watching what China's doing. You know, Joe Biden has had one state dinner. He invited the president of France, Macron, Macron was there. I went. I was invited. I'm the leader. I'm going to go. I took my mother. <laughs> now, I want you to understand my mom. My mom's 82 years old. She's a little hard of hearing, and she doesn't like to wear her hearing aids. <laughs> and my mom, every Wednesday, goes to Costco to fill up her car. She, she doesn't run out of gas. All she does, she gets every morning, she takes her dog, Mia, to Sonic to get ice, and she goes by and has lunch, and she comes by. But every Wednesday, she goes to goes to um, Costco to get gas because it's cheaper. It's a long line. And every Wednesday she takes a picture of the line and a picture of the price and asks me, what have I done about it today? <laughs> but when I take my mom to the state dinner, you walk in and it's a big crowd, big crowd. Not my crowd. A lot of Hollywood people in there. Not a lot of people want to talk to me. So my mom and I get a lot of but my mom would go over and tell everybody they had a nice dress. And, oh, mom, mom, that's a movie star. She doesn't really like me. So my mom proudly said, I'm Kevin McCarthy's mom. <laughs> Those conversations didn't go on long. And she so then when we come through, there, there's a greeting line. There's President Biden. There's, there's um, President Macron. There's the First Lady. Joe Biden, the First Lady of France. And then as you get through, and I go through, and President Biden's really excited to see my mom, not excited to see me. And they talk for a while, and they go, and I go through, and then, then you walk down, you get in this trolley, and you go down, and go down this tent for dinner. When we get in the trolley, my mom goes, up. Uh, that president was really nice. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. She says, now, was that Hunter Biden next to the president? <laughs> and I look at my mom, and I say, oh, no, mom, that, that was President Macron. Macron. <laughs> and I said, did you call him Hunter? She goes, I don't think so. I think she did. But Macron just went to China to meet with President Xi. And on his way back on the airplane, you know what he said? He'd just been to America where he had his date dinner. He just went to China and saw President Xi. And he told Europe, he probably shouldn't listen to America as much as we had in the past, especially when it comes to Taiwan and China. China is a communist country. I love the people of China, but I don't respect the Communist Party. China brought us COVID and mind to the world. It killed millions of people. Killed, killed a lot of people in France, too. China is now partnering up with Iran, with Russia, with North Korea. China's gone to Brazil and tell them don't trade in dollars anymore. He's gone to Putin and stands with Putin as Putin kills innocent people in Ukraine. He wants to trade in yuans, not in dollars. The military in China doesn't care about pronouns. In America today, this is our moment in time to stand for the freedoms of what we know and believe. And you know what? Our allies better stand with us too.
best way to do that? Make a country that is stronger. You know, I'm going to make this pledge to you, because I know you're going to do the right thing. We were 1,350 votes short of winning this seat. We're not going to come up short next time. Because it wasn't just a seat, we were short for the country. You're here today, they're outside because they know it. I'm going to ask you to do a few things. You're here because you care about the event. I don't want you to care about just today. I want you to care about tomorrow and the next day. I want you to bring a few more. I want you to volunteer. I want you to tell your friends. I want you to invite people. People, you probably, maybe they don't philosophically agree with the same place you do, but they care about America. There is no greater contrast between Yvette and Gabe. I have friends who are Democrats, but Gabe is not a Democrat as we know it. He is pretty much a socialist. He's out of the bounds of what the Democratic Party believes. He's not the best for New Mexico. He's not the best for America. I need you to not only just help her with your voice, with your vote, supply some resources to her. The most powerful money in politics goes directly to her. Why? Because she can control her own destiny. She can reserve TV time at a lower rate than I can. But we have a reason to stand up right now. You know, in my office, I have a portrait of Abraham Lincoln, I have a portrait of Ronald Reagan, and I have a portrait of Washington crossing the yellow brick. And there's a reason why. You see, I was born in California. I was born into a Democrat family, but I was always a Republican. So anybody who wants to challenge on me and think they're more conservative than I, they are wrong. I rejected what I heard at home because I understood there was something bad. I believe in the individual My portrait of Abraham Lincoln is in black and white. The greatest challenge to our Constitution was the Civil War. You know what? We never have to take down a Republican statue. If the Democratic parties truly believe in what they say, they should change the name of the party. We would never have Jim Crow laws. If Abraham Lincoln wasn't assassinated, he was the first Republican president. You know what Abraham Lincoln would tell you if he was here today? He would tell you to believe in the exceptionalism of America. You know why he would say that? Just think of the Gettysburg Address, four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated the proposition that we are all equal. He goes on to say, but if we fail, government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from earth. Think of the words that he said of this at Gettysburg, not knowing if we would even stay together as a country. We weren't the world power, but he knew America was more than a country. America was an idea, that our idea was so strong, we were stronger than the strongest nation. Why? Because the power didn't rest with the king, it rested with us, and it still does to this day. <laughs> you came to one other countries that conceived in liberty and dedicated them for all evil. There is not one. That's why the idea of America should be. You know, I have this portrait that um, Yvette has watched many times. It's, it's Washington crossing the Delaware. You've all seen that portrait, right? Do you know when that, when that took place? Christmas 1776. Steve Jobs had not in, invented the iPhone yet, so there was no picture of it, no camera, right? <laughs> but do you know who painted the painting? It wasn't anybody who was even there that day. No, Emmanuel Lennox. But thank you for guessing. <laughs> you know who Emmanuel Lentz was? He wasn't even an American, he was an immigrant. Who had lived in America, and he went home to his own country of Germany. You want to know why he painted it? For the same reason Lincoln tells us to believe in exceptionalism. That he knew America was more than a country and idea. He wanted Germany to have a revolution based upon the freedoms and values of America. His talent was art, so he says, I'm going to paint this painting to inspire my countrymen and women. Now, he gets it historically incorrect, right? The Delaware looks like the Rhine, but he's German. We give him a break, right? <laughs> he puts Washington in a row. Historians will tell you he crossed in the Durham. 
He puts 13 people in the boat, but he only shows you 12 faces. Why would he pick the number 13? 13 colonies, right? He has Washington standing up in a rowboat, wearing a ceremonial uniform, his hand on his chest, looking so stoic. You look at Washington, you're proud. You would say, if I was there that day, I would follow that man. I bet he had never lost a battle. But you know what history has told us? At that moment, at that second, he had only been a loser. He had never won. That was our first victory when we surprised the Hessians. But what I want you to do, when you look at the boat, don't look at Washington. Look at who's in the boat. Because personally, that's what I see when I look at you. You know, the second person, he's wearing a beret, he's Scottish. The person directly across from, rowing in the same cadence in the green jacket is African. You come down to the boat in the middle, the person in the red, the person who looks like they're the strongest is a woman. And in the very back is a Native American. Now, I cannot tell you from a historical point of view if they were the ones in the boat that day, but that this young immigrant who had lived in America, that's who he believed would be in the boat. Now, the second to last person, he's a farmer. I believe he's from Bakersfield, California. <laughs> But he has this hand across his face. You see, it's the hand of the 13th person nobody sees. And what I believe Emmanuel is telling us, here we are, not a country, but an idea. Having lost every battle, going against the strongest power in the world, and willing to risk it on our holiest of night, here's a hand to join us. That's as true today as it was then. If you think along those lines, that if we could get everybody in the boat together, and I'm talking about not just all the Republicans. If you're an American, I want you in the boat. If you're going to row in the same cadence, we've got the same problems, and we're going to hold you calm. And we're going to get to the other side. And we're going to make tomorrow better than today. Because if we elect... We elect you to bet. I don't think Joe Biden's going to get reelected to that. <laughs> Our future depends on that. They have spent too much and brought us inflation. They have fought against the things that have made us strong to make other countries stronger by going after it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Can you hear me, guys? Sorry. <laughs> I was... Yeah, my check, my check. One, two, three, four, five.
gonna get an IFB check if someone can hear me. Awesome, got it, friend. Thank you. 